himself really on um, coming into the England squad in last season. In what ways do you feel that you're a better player than that? Have you improved? Yeah, I think international football, particularly tactically, is, is a different is a different kettle of fish, you know, to club football. So that was the first thing I noticed that playing for England, you know, you've got to be more concentrated off the ball as well and, and kind of defensively because the games are, you know, often down to, to fine margins and maybe one goal difference sometimes. You've got to be very focused there and I think it, it definitely has helped me improve tactically. Can I ask, you mentioned it, um, about the, obviously you, you weren't born for Euro '96. Do you, do you feel that um, the players have kind of none of the? They're not scarred by the past at all. There's no fear of, of uh, facing this German team. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but personally, absolutely not. Um, like I say, my memory's a little bit different, and you know, I think, like I said before, we're just looking forward to making our own history and winning this game. Thanks, Mike. We'll jump online briefly to Rob Draper in the Mail on Sunday. Yeah, hi, Dominic. Um, really just wanted to follow up on that generational um, difference, I suppose. So for our generation, it's uh, Germany are the big bogey team. We'll never get past them. It's really tricky. It's all we're always going to lose on penalties. And do you feel that being sort of younger, fresher, having sort of... Uh, uh, you know your, your own experiences of winning the under 20 world cup that maybe for your generation and these players it's it's not such a big deal i guess so yeah it's not something that you know we really speak about in 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 that sense um i think it's quite a young squad so it's not really in memory in that sense so how could we then you know kind of lose sleep over over something like that it's it's we kind of looking forward i feel like this is a group that looks forward and we're kind of looking to to make a difference in in what's you know what's been already so for me i, I think that speaking for the rest of the lads it's, it's not something we really give too much thought to and just just to follow up on that a lot of you have won trophies with england in the age groups before or certainly a good few of you haven't you and and, and what difference does that make winning an england shirt your, your experience is more about winning tournaments than going out yeah, I think obviously the World Cup and, and, and having that experience of winning, that winning feeling. I think that we had, I had the 21s tournament a couple of summers later and that didn't go quite the same. So I've experienced on both, experienced, experienced it on both hands. Um, but to experience winning is a, is a special feeling. You know, we've got some Champions League winners in, in the team and, and things like that and players that have, have won trophies. But particularly for England, we're looking to make that history. Thanks, Rob. Now go back in the room with Dan. Hi, Dominic. Um, on Tuesday, there'll be about 45,000 in the stadium, which is going to be the biggest crowd any of you have played in front of for a, for a long, long time. And how much of a, an extra boost is that going to give you? And, just what, and what's it like just being in a stadium when, you know, when the anthem strikes up with that, many, with that many people? It's an unbelievable feeling. I think my first experience, obviously, playing for England with fans was in the, in the friendly up in Middlesbrough. And... That was the first time I heard the national anthem as a player and got to sing the national anthem as a player with fans in the stadium and you know, it gave me goosebumps. So to be playing in the Euros now, every time that the national anthem is sung, I think, you know, there's, I'm not sure how many fans have been in the stadium prior to this, but like you say, 40 odd thousand are gonna be in there and it's gonna make a massive difference. I think it gives you that extra boost and it's just um, a very, a very proud moment. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, back online to Tom Hopkinson from The People. Hello, Dominic. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, when you're in the, the bubble and away at a tournament like this, how difficult is it not to, or, or to keep yourself in there and, and not to listen to speculation that might be going on about your future? Um, how difficult is it not to you know, go online or chat to friends about it? It's quite easy. Just don't, don't go on my phone. <laughs> That's what I tend to tend to do really now. I think it's um, I'm focused. I'm focused now, and I'm I'm focused on training and working hard, and like I say, being ready to to make an impact on this tournament. You know what my future holds and what people speculate about is not my concern at this moment in time. Thank you. 
Thanks, Tom. Uh, next, we go to Simon Peach of Press Association. Oops, if I'm unmuted, I don't let go. Um, first of all, can you just take us back to the to Korea and what what that tournament was like to to go all the way through and to and what ups and downs there were on the way to to, to winning? Yeah, it was a very unique experience. Being obviously on the other side of the world, it's it's very much a bubble that you're in, um, and you don't because it was different time zones. You know, not being able to speak to my family as much and things like that. They were some of the toughest things obviously being 1920 at the time that I had to deal with but I think because we were winning games and we had that inner feeling and inner belief that we could go all the way that kind of carried us all the way through. Is there that same inner feeling and belief I guess now and I ask that as well partly because Thomas Muller said today partly what makes this game so interesting is that both sides think this is our turn this is our turn today we're going to win this. Yeah, I think it's that's one of the main things you have to believe if you want to achieve anything in life. So, you know, within the camp, we believe that we that we can win the Euros and we have to if if you want to, you know, achieve that. Thanks, Simon. Uh, next, we'll go to Theo Squires, the Liverpool Echo. Hi, Dominic. Uh, I know you've said you've not been able to think too much about who your new manager might be at club level. I was just wondering how much of a distraction the managerial search and losing Carlo Ancelotti was during a major tournament, if uh, you and Jordan Pickford had spoken about it at all, and if you'd um, sent a text message or heard from Carlo Ancelotti at all since he left the club. Yeah, obviously it came as a surprise, but I wouldn't say it's been a distraction. Um, it happened a few weeks ago now, and it's, it's not been something that's really been too on my mind. Um, you know, I sent Carlo a message thanking him for everything that he'd done for me. And, and he replied, so that's kind of how football works, you know. One minute, one thing's one way, and then the next it's not. So I think that Carlo was, was very good for me, and I'm very grateful to have been able to play under him with the experience that he's got. Thank you. OK, thanks, Theo. Uh, next, we'll go to Antonello Guerrera from La Repubblica. Hello. Hi, Dominic. Hi. Um, just to uh, follow up on uh, Ancelotti, uh, uh, you, you have mass, massively Im improved under him as a manager, scoring much more than in the previous uh, seasons. So, what was the best lesson that you learned from him? I mean, what changed for you under him that it might be also useful now in the Euros and the next games? And uh, uh, you, you said that, that he replied to you to, to your to your message. Can you tell us what uh, did he say to you? Thank you. Uh, that was a personal conversation, so I, I probably won't share that information, but um, he, was, he was just wishing me all the best, really. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing that Carlo kind of came in and said to me was just be more focused on being a centre forward. You know, prior to that, I used to kind of run here, there and everywhere and do a little bit too much outside of the box. So he set us, set us up in a, in a way that suited me, where I could, you know, get in better positions to score goals. And I think it's, it's an age and experience thing as well, you know. I was, 22 or 23 when he came in and I'm 24 now so you know at that age and the experience I've had it's kind of been a time of coming together okay I think that concludes today's media conference thanks for joining us